The, the name of the game is saving money, um, running the greatest distance for the least amount of expense. I, I'd like to beat it, just to, just to beat it, just to beat the system. Most of the owner operators think that they're going to prove that we're wrong about saving fuel at 55. 55. Is it really an economical speed for trucks? Or do you get better mileage at higher speeds? This is the double nickel challenge. Sponsored by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Voluntary Truck and Bus Fuel Economy Improvement Program. 32 independent truckers were selected at random from 161 entries and represented 18 states. Each driver pitted his skill and his rig against the government's claim that you can get better mileage at 55 than at higher speeds. They came in rigs of all kinds, vans, tanks, low beds and flats, nine truck makes, four engine makes, 19 engine models. Gross weights range from 25,000 to 78,000 pounds with an average of just under 50,000 pounds. When they arrived, every truck was given a thorough BMCS inspection. And, of course, a few owner-operators expressed some pretty strong opinions about the competition. The government didn't expend the money for us to be out here in front of the press and everyone else to have us beat them. Before the challenge began, they outfitted every truck with special test equipment, standardized fuel tanks, and tachographs. Each truck was weighed in and then warmed up with a six lap run around the seven and a half mile high speed oval test track. I didn't come here to challenge 55. I came here to find out what this truck would do. I think I'll be able to beat it by running lower RPM. It'll be burning less fuel. Now right after the warm up run, fuel tanks were removed, refilled, weighed, and reinstalled. The fuel weights were recorded to make certain that the fuel results would be accurate. And then the competition began. There were two runs. The first one was at whatever speed each trucker believed would deliver the best mileage for his rig. The second was at a steady 55. Both runs were 45 miles long, and each cab carried an official observer. Speeds were measured by radar. In the first run, Speeds range from 59 to 66 miles per hour. Average speed, 62.3. At the end of the high-speed run, fuel tanks were weighed before refilling for the 55 run. Mileage for the high-speed run ranged from 4.2 to 6.3 miles per gallon. Average, 5.0. In the 55 run, Mileage ranged from 4.4 to 7.4. Average 5.5 miles per gallon. Following each run, the weight information was relayed to a data reduction center where pounds of fuel used were translated into miles per gallon. Those results were immediately posted on a scoreboard. Six of the 32 drivers got an average of 4.6% better mileage at speeds over 55. But the remaining 26 averaged a fuel savings of 13.5% at an even 55. Averaged together, all 32 drivers saved 10.4% at 55. In, there, in every contest, you're going to find exceptions. But as a rule, 55 is more economical. I know that if I keep that truck moving under 60, my economy it is going to be much better. I was counting. I thought I could beat it. I can't. I learned that my engine can be run more efficiently, and as lifespan of the engine would last as long by bringing my RPMs down a little bit, and that the power would still be as good. We hear a lot of controversy today about some truckers say that their, their rig uh, runs more efficient above 55 than it does at 55. Some fellows came here uh, all bent on proving that 55 was a, a wasteful level of fuel, uh, um, miles per hour that was wasting fuel. Some fellows have the way their trucks are geared, but they are not in the majority, believe me. The results here have proved that, that 55, far and above, is a more economical rate to run. That's number one. That was the double nickel challenge. It wasn't meant to be the last word on 55, and it isn't. 
But it did prove one thing. It proved that, on the average, you can save almost 1.5% in fuel for every mile per hour that you come down toward 55. What does that mean? Well, let's say you're an owner-operator and you're putting 100,000 miles a year on your truck. For each 1% improvement in fuel economy you get, you can save 100 bucks. 100 bucks that could be going into your pocket instead of out your exhaust. And if you were to get the 10.4% improvement made at East Liberty, you'd save more than a grand in that year. So here's something to consider. If you want to make some easy money, the next time you're out on the road, keep your revs down and try doing your own double nickel challenge. How close can you get to the more than 10% fuel savings realized at East Liberty? Go ahead. Give it a try. We dare you. Uh...